flue terminal positions. This is the first of three short videos which will explain why and where we put flue terminals. In order to understand why we um, have rules around where we can put the terminals of flues, you've got to understand A, how a flue works, and B, the different pressures that live inside a house or outside a house. For example, if the outside of the house is cold and the inside of a house is warm, then there's more pressure inside the house than there is outside. If the inside of the house is cold and the outside is warm, there's more pressure outside the house. Now how this affects your flue operation is this. If you imagine the base of the flue at the appliance, position D in this photograph, is inside the room and the terminal, B, is outside the room, we can demonstrate the effect that different pressures have got by creating a positive pressure within the room. If, for example, you put a big fan on in the room, it would create positive pressure, which means that the pressure would be pushing on the walls of the room inside, trying to get out to the normal atmosphere. In this room, with a flue, the room's obviously got a hole in it. And that is where the excess pressure is going to go. So this situation leads to you having positive pressure at the base of the flue and negative pressure at the terminal. If you imagine negative pressure as being uh, a vacuum cleaner sucking air out of the flue. When everything's set up like this, the flue will work correctly because there's less pressure at the terminal than there is at the appliance at the base of the flue. However, if we have the same scenario but I'll show you a position that you can get into where you have extra pressure outside and negative pressure inside. Then you end up with positive pressure at the terminal and negative pressure at the base of the flue inside the room. This leads to flue reversal and products of combustion coming back into the room. If you place the terminal in the wrong position, you may well end up in this position. And this is the reason why we have rules and regulations about where terminals can be located. Now around your house, depending on what way the wind's blowing, this is just an example, you have different pressure zones. And if you look on a flat roof, you have a slight pressure zone going about a third of the way across the roof, up there. And on pitched roofs, on the second picture there, you can see that you have a whole area of pressure running the whole length of one side of the roof. Pay particular attention to this pitch on the flat roof around about where you've got the corner of the roof at the top because that becomes quite important when we're talking about pressure zones. 
it's because of these pressure zones that the law has stated you must keep terminals outside of a certain distance from the roof itself. The scientists have studied pressure zones around houses in all sorts of conditions. And if you look on this picture, the yellow shading is where the pressure zones normally live. We've just got to keep the terminals outside of those zones to prevent flu reversal. As an aside, for those of you who don't know what a dormer window is, and it's shown by this little triangle on this picture, then a dormer window looks like that in real life. In the next video, I'll explain to you about the positioning of terminals to keep them outside of the pressure zones.